starts with Jesus. Change in the church starts with Jesus. Change in the school starts with Jesus. You can't do nothing without him.
I'm here to explain three virtual ways to give. Hopefully we will be in the church really soon, but I'm told that it is important to continue our giving. Currently, Antioch East uses Cash App, Zelle, and the post office as ways to give your offerings. First is Cash App. Cash App is an app in which you connect your credit and debit card to your phone so that you are able to send money to other Cash App users. Next is Zelle. Zelle is an application that is accessible through your online banking via your checking account. You can send your offerings through the post office through the P.O. Box, which is Antioch East Baptist Church, P.O. Box 298, Elwood, Georgia, 30294. Oh. Good morning, Antioch East family. My name is Kiara, and I will be reading the Lord's Prayer. Give God the glory. May everyone bow their heads and close their eyes. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our deaf ears, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have read to you the Lord's Prayer. Give God the glory. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Kiana. Thank you for that prayer of covering. We give God all the glory this morning. We want to say to all that are with us today, welcome our Antioch East Baptist Church family. Welcome those who have become a part of our family through live streaming. We want to thank you for joining us at this time. It's our youth Sunday, and what a great Sunday it is. Yes, we're still in the same place. We are waiting for the green light for us to be able to assemble together for worship service in person. We're still proceeding with our Sunday parking service, our fellowship time in the parking lot. That Sunday is each week when we have finished this service, we go into the parking lot to fellowship for one hour from one to two. So we do wanna invite any and everyone that want to join us just to fellowship. It may not mean that much to one, but it means a great deal to many. So for us to come together, we give God all the praises. We also want to encourage you about our Sunday school. We do have Sunday school each Sunday right now. The adult class calling in on that same line is our prayer line. You're able to join us at that number. So we look forward to each Sunday at 915 joining us. And until further notice, we will continue to proceed. But I want to keep the attention of our young people today. I want to keep their attention by coming to you and with thus saith the Lord and let you know that you do matter. 
let you know this is the day that has been set aside each month with Vanti Alkis to pay honor, specific honor to our young people. So we wanna say thank you for joining us. Let us pray before we go any further over God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that is about to be received. Lord, we ask that our lips be oiled with your grace and mercy, that our tongue, Lord, delivers what thus saith the Lord and not thus saith oneself. Lord, we trust you this morning, God, that our young people will be fed and also those that are chiming in with us that may not be of the age of the youth, but we all of your children and we all need food, food to nourish the mind, the soul, and the spirit, Lord, to move forward on this Christian journey. So Lord, we thank you. Let your word be spoken. Let your word be used. Let your word be known. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, young people, we are coming to you with the scripture. And it's Matthew, the fourth, the fourth chapter, verses 18 through 19. We're using the King James Version and the Message Version. So young people, if you have your cell phones, I know that you will pull up the scripture. If you have the word before you, go to the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 18 through 19. We're going to read the King James Version first. And then we're going to read the Message Bible, because I really want you to get what is before you. And it reads, and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. The Message Bible reads, Walking along the beach of the Lake of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon later called Peter and Andrew. They were fishing, throwing their nets into the lake. It was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. To God be the glory. I, I want to come to you today with the scripture based on a foundation that gives us our sermon for the day, catfishing Christians. Catfishing Christians. I, I, I want you to understand when you hear that, I know your mind first go to catfish that are feeders of the bottom of the rivers or, or the lakes, but I I am coming to you about catfishing that is a real thing in today's society. Catfishing is where others are tricked to believe that the person that they're communicating with is who they see. But in the reality of it, we find many that began communicating with others through social media and other messaging platforms, pretending to be somebody they're not. We find them being able to connect with one another, building relationships. Do you believe that many throughout the world, it is a global issue, catfishing people pretending to be who they're not? Young people, I, I want you to know that there at this appointed time are individuals as we speak are being catfished right now. They are communicating with someone and you may be one of those individuals and your parents may not know but you're communicating with somebody pretending to be somebody who they really not. Oh, you may be the person that's catfishing someone pretending to be who you really not. What is it that causes us to be that way? You say, what does that have to do with the scripture pastor? It has a great deal to do with it. Jesus came before two disciples. First, before they ever became that, they were fishermen, they were in Galilee. It tells us that it was Peter. We, before that, he was known as Simon, but became Peter later on, and his brother, Andrew, were fishing in Galilee. So they were casting their nets. They were doing their work. And Jesus come along and called their names, and he asked them to follow him. He said that I'm going to teach you how to be fishermen of men and women. And not only that, he's going to teach them how to fish for children of God. 
He's going to teach them how to fish for those who appear to be one thing, but as, is another and need to know Jesus. Later on in that scripture around the 20 and 21st verse, we find that there are two other brothers that come in later. We know about James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And I want you to understand fishing was a great in place of employment during that time. Zebedee was said to have had workers who fished for him. It was lucrative. That meant that money was coming in from fishing. But Jesus came looking for his disciples and we ask about the word disciple. It means followers of teachers, of preachers, uh, philosophers. It means followers of following the word, being educated, learning, following the leadership. So they were Jesus' disciples. Jesus was going to teach them by thus saith the Lord. Because he was in the form of man, but he was truly God. Jesus, in this time, he's calling them and trying to pull them in. And he didn't, it didn't say that Jesus catfished them. It didn't say that Jesus demanded them. It said Jesus asked them, he said, follow me. That's what he said. He didn't put pressure on them. He wanted, gave them free will to follow him. But they had been around Jesus before. They had been in his company before. They had heard about him, but they dropped their nets and followed him. Well, I want you to know that in today's time with catfishing of the internet, it started out from dating apps over a decade ago where people were able to try to find that one special person that person that they thought they were destined to be with, they began going on their phones or going onto the internet, trying to connect with somebody. And we found many of those individuals put out photos of who they want to be. And it's not really them. Others fall in love with that photo and assume that that is their soulmate until eventually they find out that they one is being scammed and also it's from some other type of exploitation. We know this is a prime place where we find pedophiles looking for children and also finding others of criminal act looking for those victims that they can cause harm to. In God's word, we want to let you know with this catfishing is that young people, we just don't want to focus on that. We want to talk about catfishing Christians. I want to let you know catfishing is not new. If we look at the beginning of God's word, if you go to God's word, even in the book of Genesis, and you will find in the book of Genesis where it tells us that Genesis 3 and 1, it tells us that Satan was subtle. That meant that Satan was crafty. He was very crafty about what he did and how he went about approaching those. He set up a platform in how to enter into the Garden of Eden he was catfishing Adam and Eve. He let Adam and Eve think that he was one thing and he was looking out for their best interests. He wanted them to be like him, which truly he did, but he also wanted them to believe that it could be like God. Catfishing God's people. Adam and Eve were perfect in every way. But Satan knew that, but Satan wanted to interrupt them. He wanted to disturb their holiness. He wanted to block their relationship with God. There are those that are seeking you, that's trying to block your relationship with God, young people. We find that historically with catfishing, it has been throughout the Bible, we go into the word when Jesus came in that same chapter, in the cool of the day. That meant that it was evening. And Jesus was looking for Adam. You remember, he called out Adam's name. And Adam answered him eventually and said he did not answer him initially because he was naked. See, Adam had been catfished by Satan because Satan used Eve to get to Adam. And then Adam had used who God created. He said, you created this woman. Who caused me to do that? Well, he's saying this woman pretended to be one thing, but she was another because she catfished me. In other words, I did something that I shouldn't have done because I was in love. I did something that I shouldn't have done because 
This woman you gave me, I trusted her. I want to say to you, young people, please be careful with those you trust. Be careful because in the time that we're living in, we could easily be deceived by many that pretend to be Christians who are not. We know that Delilah, she catfished Samson. Samson was playing with her. He told her, she said three times, you have not told me the truth. And she wanted him to believe that she loved him to the heart. But if you read in the book where it talks about Delilah and Samson, the book of Judges, the 16th chapter, you will find out it said that Samson, in the beginning of that chapter, you'll find out that Samson, he loved Delilah. It said that. But Delilah was on a mission. She catfished and she pretended to be what she wasn't. And how many of us have pretended to be who we're not to get someone's attention? I, I want you to know that in the word of God, catfishing has existed and it has been destructive to the man's sanctity with God. You don't want to lose your relationship with him, but you have been tricked by others to say this is what Christians do. We often hear people say, we all have sinned. We all, no one is perfect. Everybody make mistakes. That is so true. Even I as a pastor, even as a man, even I as a man of God, none of us are perfect, but we should strive to be better. We should strive to be better than we were before. See, with the fishermen of God fishing for men and women, God has used his son to let them know we are trying to draw others to God. We find even in the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 15 through 16. Even God asked Simon Peter, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. See, Jesus did not pretend to be who he wasn't. He was always Jesus. But many that tried to be a part of the circle pretended to be more than who they were. I want to say with the history that is given to us, that is easy to be catfished. The reason that many of you all are young people because you're searching for something. You're searching for something or someone. We have found through our studies that it comes from being lonely. It comes from not being sure of yourself. It comes from wanting to fit in. It comes from wanting to have a place of recognition. The thing that I want you to remember, the worst place that breaks my heart to be catfish is in the church. Why do I say that, young people? There is something out here in the world that is drawing you not to want to go to church. There is something that causes you not to want to be a part of worship service. I know, I know you don't want to get up in the mornings. I know, I know you can turn on Facebook. You can turn on YouTube and hear a sermon. I get it. But don't you think that you need to be in a place where you can be loved personally? You can be lifted up by a village of church believers? But as I said, the heartbreaking moment is that in a church, it's where you find some of your big catfishers, pastors, deacons, leaders, even members sitting on the pew are catfishers. That, and I mean by that is that they are those that have truly not given their life to Christ, truly not being who God wants us to be. We take on the title of being a Christian, but we don't show Christianity. You young people are looking for the truth. That's what you all, you all are individuals that look for facts. You want reasoning. You want to be sure about what you do and you want to be sure about who you are around. You do a lot of research because it's at the touch of a thumb with your cell phones or your laptops or your tablets. You can pull up anything you want to find out just like that. But being in, being in a church and being catfished as Christians, that that means that there are those that are praying 
on the weak, praying on those that they can draw closer to them. If a pastor is not preaching Jesus Christ and the pastor is preaching everything else except for Jesus Christ, you're being catfished because the word of God cannot be dismissed. You cannot overlook Jesus. You cannot overlook the word of God. We have to study to show ourselves approved. That means that you just don't pick up the word of God and just read it one time. You want to know God. You want to make sure that you are not being tricked by what man tells you. You want to be sure that the word of God is before you and you're studying it to understand it. There have been many that have been hurt financially, emotionally, and spiritually by others who have catfished them, others who have pretended to be a child of God, others who have pretended to make it seem that it's about God and it's really about ourselves. Young people, I don't want you to walk away from the church because the church is a haven. The church is a place of worship. Every church may not fulfill you. You have to find that church where you're able to grow. Find that church where you're able to nourish from God's word. Find that church where you can bring your talents, where you can serve God and be who you really are. Don't pretend to be something you're not. God loves you for who you are. That's why he was going to teach Peter and Andrew and James and John and all the other disciples how to cast their nets, given the truth, how to show people that there's a place in God's house for all of us. We got some Delilahs in the world. We got some Samson in the world. Samson tricked Delilah as well. Remember that. There was catfishing going back and forth. I, I don't want to trick you with God's word. I just want to tell you the truth with God's word. I want you to know that it's all right to feel lonely. It's all right to be confused. It's all right to be disappointed. But there's a place that there's no pretense. There's, there's no photographs or photoshots used to try to draw you in. Because we know even with websites, we can dress the websites up to bring young people into the church. But when they get into the church, is the church really what the website said it would be? Is it a place that you accept me for who I am, you, is that you accept me with all my brokenness, you accept me in trying to learn about Jesus, you accept me in teaching me God's way, you accept me in saying that there's a place in the house for me. Now, people, I have a question for you. We can follow it everything and everybody else. We can keep up with Beyonce. We can keep up with Jay-Z, we can keep up with any and everybody who is up and coming. We can keep up with all the athletes. We can keep up with all the entertainers, the actors, the new movies, the old movies. But why are we so unwilling to keep up with God? See, in this time that we're living in, life is an illusion also. We're so caught up into the entertainment, we're so caught up into the showcasing that we forget to try to be caught up in who we're supposed to be. I want you to know every magazine you look at and you see people's faces and you see that is they look so perfect. But you've heard of airbrushing. Everyone have flaws. Everyone have insecurities. Everyone is struggling one way or another. If you're good at this, you may not be good at that. I want you to understand that that is okay. The devil want to catfish you and let you believe that, hey, if you don't have this or you're not becoming that, you're not accepting this, then you're not complete. You're not whole. That's not true. That is not true. God has made us the way he meant for us to be made. We are divinely designed by him. I want you to know in the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter, verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, 
Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. See, that is the same fisherman that Jesus called the fish for men and women. He wants you to know, no matter how much you think that you're secure from being touched, Satan seeks to destroy you. Young people, he seeks you because he wants you. He wants you because he knows the grand scheme of things. He, he knows that you are meant to be greater than what you've ever been before if you follow Jesus. But he doesn't want that. He wants you dependent on him. I want you to check yourself. How does it work when you don't have God in your life? Right now, for those who have never known God, the time is to know him now. It's to know that God is not a pretender. God doesn't have to hide behind a screen to pretend to be something he's not. Jesus Christ was real from the very beginning to the very end. Jesus never pretended. And I want you to know you don't have to be pretending. You've been hooked by somebody that has taken advantage of you, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. You've been hooked by the things in the world that you thought were so important. It's like this. Lady Patricia and I ordered some things before through Amazon. We saw it in the paper and we saw it on the internet. It looked perfect. Then it comes to us and it's nothing like we thought it would be. We felt like we've been robbed, we've been catfished. There was an illusion that this was the perfect thing, that there it would fit what we needed for it to fit, but it did not. I have returned some things before that I've already ordered because it was not what I thought it would be with Jesus. The only order that he gives to us is to accept him as our Lord and Savior. Young people, that's all you have to do. There's, there's no pretense. There's nothing that you have to do besides give him your heart. And you can't pretend with your heart because in God's word, there were many that pretended with their hearts. I want to tell you about Ananias and Sapphira. They were, worship was there within the first church. Each Christian of the first church was supposed to give to the house, give to God's house. They supposed to give everything that they had earned and gave it to God's house. Well, Ananias and Sapphira, they did not. They gave everything, they kept some to the side. And they lied in the church. See, at that time, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost had already came. Peter was full with the Spirit. He could discern who was telling the truth. They lied. First person lied was Ananias. He was in the church. He lied before them, and he was he struck dead. And Peter had already stated that his wife would come into the church, and she too would die because she was going to lie. And she did. You said it was a part of the first church. They had become a part of the first church, but their hearts had hardened. They had lied in God's house. They pretended to be something they were not. They led people to believe that they were truly fishermen of God, but at the same time, they were fishermen of themselves, keeping what didn't belong to them or what they were ordered to give to the church. They weren't the only one. There was a sorcerer named Simon who was from Samaria when Peter and John and Philip was there. And they were healing people and the Holy Spirit was falling upon them as people was accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. They found him asking, I want to buy some of that. See, catfishing too is that the person that's trying to get your attention is trying to lure you in. They want to have what you have. They have become infatuated with you. You got to be careful, young people, online giving out all your information. Many lives have been lost because they gave out information to those who should have never received it. They've given their locations to where others should have never known. Don't believe the hype on the internet. Don't believe the things that are coming your way from another that you have never met. You fall in love with these people that you've never met. You trust them more than you trust someone that's before your very eyes. Stop it. Stop it now. 
Don't let anyone come in and steal your mind, your heart, and your soul. Give that to Jesus. He's the only one that's going to be able to shield and protect you. Today, I want to say the word of God is true. Jesus Christ asked Pontius Pilate, who do you say I am? He asked Peter the same thing. Because Pontius Pilate said, I heard that you're the king of the Jews. And he said, do you believe it's this because that is what people told you? He asked Peter, and Peter said, you're the Christ. You're the son of God. I, I know who you are. He said, thou hast said, as thou believest. What do you believe? Do you believe that God will love you unconditionally? You don't have to catfish God because you cannot catfish him. He knows all. He sees all. And he's with all. I want you to know today with God's word is that it is true. It is true that we are all up under attack, but especially you young people. You're searching for something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you've seen a pastor that has disappointed you. They said one thing and they've shown you another behavior. I'm sorry if someone in the church that you respected the most and they have fallen and they have disappointed you. I am sorry. I am sorry if you came into the church and you thought it was going to be more than what it was. You thought people would truly love each other and you see nothing but hate. You see nothing but division. I am sorry for your experience. But I want you to know that Satan is on some of the seats of the church. He is one of the best seat warmers. He's always looking at a way to destroy God's house, but he can't stay if you come into God's house and you begin to do what God wants you to do and not what man wants you to do. Young people, there is a place for you in the church. If you don't come to Antioch East, go to somebody's church. When you go away to school, go to somebody's church. After you get out of school, go to somebody's church. I would love to have you at our church. I would love to see you grow. I would love to see us grow together. But I'm not catfishing you today. I'm not going to be a catfishing Christian. I'm not going to tell you one thing and do another. I'm trying my best to be all I can be. I'm trying my best to be at the feet of God and not at my own feet trying to always do what I want to do. I, I want God to protect me. But this world makes you think that you are right and that you're safe. But without God, you're never covered. You're never covered without God, young people. I can't put it any other way. I can tell you, I know you get tired of people choking church down your throat. I know you get tired of those naysayers. I know you get tired of people come in as sheep and wool of clothing. I, I can't do anything about those people, but I tell you, there are people in the church who are truly lovers of God, who are truly trying to build the kingdom of God, who are truly want to be there for you. And they're not pretending. What you see is what you get. I wish I could tell you that life will be perfect. It won't. Peter and James and John and Andrew they learned how to cast their nets. See, initially, they were just going looking, and they thought that they could do it by themselves, but they realized that they needed Jesus. And when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus was the net. He was the one that would draw all people to him. He was the one that would use us for his purpose. Young people, he want to use you for your purpose. Get on that internet and start speaking about Jesus. Get on that internet and let someone know that you're saved. Get on that internet and let somebody know if you want to be saved, give your life to Jesus. See, we got to be fishermen, not catfishing, but fishermen of the Lord. Yeah, we'll take some real catfish people that act like catfish. We'll take them, the brass and the brims. Anyone got those kind of behaviors, human beings, we will take them because God wants us all, but we got to give our life to Jesus. Young people, people, how can you do it without being hooked to Jesus? See, Jesus don't have to use man's bait. He don't have to use fortune and fame. He doesn't have to use houses on the hill. Only thing Jesus uses is this, the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. 
The Holy Spirit is in the word of God. I want you to know there's power in prayer. I want you to know there's power in studying God's word. I want you to know that God would never fail you. This is the bait that I want to give you. Because once you get into this bait, once you taste it, once you start living in it, once you start walking in it, I promise you, you will be hooked. Eternally hooked. I don't want to pretend with you today. I want to give you what is needed. And that's Jesus. I, I can't save you. I, I don't have that power, but God does. God is real. See, God changes not. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Remember, he came to Adam and Eve the cool of the day, in the evening. Satan is so busy, he comes to you in the morning, in the evening, at night. But I want you to know when he come at you, you can come to God 24-7. He will never fail. God's word is true. I'm casting a net today. Trying to draw men and women and children, boys and girls. The lost. And those that have fallen to the wayside, I, I cast a net to you. Asking you to come to Jesus. I'm not not going to pretend with you today, young people. Sometimes church gets to be too much. Sometimes people that you know the church people, sometimes they get to be too much. Sometimes I get to be too much for myself. What about you? But we're never too much for God. So come to him. Give your life to Jesus. He will teach you how to be fishermen of men and women. He will use you to bring others to him. One of your friends, one of your family members, they're in need of knowing Jesus. The person you don't know is in need of knowing Jesus. Call on him. Ask him to come into your life. And if he's already there, don't be afraid to be a child of God. Don't let Satan catfish you from being who you're supposed to be. Because you can't pretend to be a Christian because it will show up in time. Nothing can be hidden from God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Let him direct you today. So young people, I pray that something has hooked you today to knowing that you can be yourself, but you're going to need Jesus. So as I come forth and saying that salvation is here, opening what we call the doors, that means hearts are open, that means that the arms of God is open to you. As Romans 10 and 9 says, confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart. God is raised him from the dead. Thou art saved. You are saved if you accept that, young people. And being saved means that you are protected. You don't have to worry about God turning on you. You don't have to worry about God not being there for you. You don't have to worry about the internet. You don't have to worry about the text messaging. The only person that you have to answer to now is to the Heavenly Father. Here, my Lord, use me. I want to thank you today. I want to thank you for giving me this time. I ask you to be careful what you're doing out there with the internet. Be careful who you let into your space. Be careful who you follow. Follow Jesus. He truly will make you fishermen of men and women. To God be the glory. I want to say at this time, please continue to follow us at Antioch East Baptist Church. 
Trust me, I, I miss being in the church. <laughs> I miss being amongst people. But I want you to know I would not let God's word go by one Sunday. Not all would it not come into you on the table to be fed. So let's go out and fish. Drawing people to Jesus. Today, we will be at the church from one to two for our fellowship Sunday. Being able to love on one another, being able to keep each other lifted up. I am praying that we be home soon at Antioch East Baptist Church at 2352 Old Rex Morrow Road in Ellenwood, Georgia, 30294. And for anyone that wants to continue to follow us, slipping a word to us, I hope you did in the chat box, but also our website. You go in there and say, contact us. You can put in there for prayer, whatever you need. We will try to answer you accordingly. God's grace is sufficient. Let us close out with our benediction, young people, and all those that have followed us. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Let us not forget to pray for one another. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. But we're Antioch East Baptist Church and those that follow us, we go with exceptional prayer because God, we know through you, we have exceptional power. Love to you all and to God be the glory. Amen.